Hello there, welcome to class. I'm Miss Faust. Please make sure you have paper and a pen or pencil handy because we are going to take notes today. Yes, you need to take notes. We are starting with our next writer. Okay, so our next reading selection and down the road, the very next essay. I knew you were thinking essay, right Miss Faust? Yes, we will. Not today, but Next class session is coming just like that, isn't it? So are you ready? Okay, looks good. So let's so let's come over here to the board and I'm going to start with the name. Our writer is James Thurber, but is also known as James Grover Thurber. But I put that in parentheses Grover because that's commonly you just know him as James Thurber. Okay? And those are his dates, 1894 to 1961. So let me give you a little bit of information about Thurber. He's quite fascinating. As I wrote up here, yes, he is a writer. He's an American writer. He is a cartoonist. He did a lot of f fantastic um, cartoon, um, fantastic cartoons. You should check those out. Again, go by James Thurber. And he wrote plays. Okay. Um, he worked with a gentleman of the name E. Period B. Period White, who is what we call an um, expert in grammar, how to write um, properly. Okay, um, so he has books out for um, the, the best writing style and the like. Mr. White does, and Thurber actually co-wrote with E. B. White. So that's fascinating. At one point, he was the managing editor and staff writer at the New Yorker. Okay, so um, that's many, many years ago, the New Yorker. And let's see, what else can we talk? Let's see, what else can we talk about here? Okay, so as we know, the cartoonist and the like, he tends to write about male characters. Who how do I want to who tend to escape into fantasy, into a fantasy world, who are not quite able to deal with reality. So they escape. It's like a little dream world, so to speak. Okay. And they are considered befuddled. In other words, they're really confused by the world around them. Okay. So again, he was, was a part of the New Yorker. It was a magazine, not a newspaper. So he, he dealt that um, he worked there. He had what we call stock characters. Those are your typical everyday characters. Let's see what we have. Like the snarling wife. Like, oh, he's nasty. You ask her, hey, honey, is this the sugar? What do you think? That kind. Okay. Um, the timid hapless husband, the poor husband, who was like, oh my gosh, I just asked if you have some sugar, who was really scared of his wife. So those are the stock figures that he has. Um, and he does also work with animals and cartoons and the, and the like. Um, so he's well known for that. Let's see. I mean, he's, really, he's very fascinating. I'm trying to get some something else here. Oh, he does, um, for part of his writing, it's not just for adults, it's also for children. And what's really amazing is um, that the story that you're going to be reading, namely The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, really truly deals with that, is that stock character, the snarling wife and the timid, hapless, you know, is helpless, it's like, oh, it was really unfortunate husband, okay? A man who tends to be an urban man, okay, not somebody from the rural area who is befuddled. So that story really f goes well with that, with that characterization. Um, what I wanted to say is that story was also um, made into a movie uh, back in the um, late 40s. And then in 2013, a newer version came out with Ben Stiller. So, yeah. Yeah, he's known for um, um, interesting 
characters, interesting writing, and the like. Okay. What, he was married at one point in his life. He got married, and his wife um, wasn't just had the didn't just have the role of being wife and the like. She was also the person who managed. It was like his editor and took care of him because at some point, let's see, I thought I had the eight. Okay. Um, let's see. Around 1940s and the like. He, he really had to start um, settling back a little bit because of a due to an injury that he had to his eyes. Um, actually, his left he lost it at the age of nine in, in an accident. So by the time of 1940 hit, he, his his eyesight was failing. What was left, okay. So his wife was there, had to do a lot of work for him because he didn't stop. He didn't just go, okay, that's it, I'm done. I can't write anymore because my 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 only eye here can not barely see in front of me. No, he continued. So his wife was really helpful in that sense. Um, so that he, I remember I said he's also a cartoonist. He kept drawing, and it was around 1952. So it was, and but around around 1952, he, you can look at the age, you know, he lived to, um, he only lived to 61, so it was just a few more years before he passed away. But around 1952, he had to give up drawing, in other words, his cartoons, okay. Um, he, he had a really, a, a clear insight into people's foibles, in other words, their silliness, their mistakes. And that's what he worked off of. Um, his his male characters are the the ones that really he really focuses on them, and he he feel he seems to pity them because they tend to get stuck with these snarling wives. Okay, so what was I gonna say? Much of his work is collected in books with titles that reveal his ironic attitude toward the world at large. That I just share that with you. If you have any questions about James Grover Thurber, please let me, let me know. He's a fascinating writer. And when you think about it, um, he didn't let the fact that he couldn't see very well stop him. Let's see what else. Okay. So I guess we could say, could we, that that's it. Um, He's like, like, a, like a role model here that keeps us pushing, you know, even though we have, you know, when you look at it, he had a disadvantage. Then let it, let it stop him. So that's pretty neat. And even in his characters, even these, the, his male characters, um, with the world that they go into, they do a lot. And you'll see what I'm talking about when you read today's story. Okay. So I need you to Google Thurber's The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. So make sure you to Google that, the text of that story. And um, for today's assignment, please read The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Please do not try to answer today's questions and down the road try to write the essay without having read the story. Next class period, like always, I will try to hit the highlights of this fascinating reading selection. I need you to copy and answer these two questions here. What kind of person is Mrs. Mitty? Mrs. Mitty. What deeds, in other words, what actions, what does he do? What deeds is Walter Mitty attempting to accomplish in his fantasy world? Okay. What's he trying to do in his fantasy world? When you think about it, what do people that go into a fantasy world, what are they doing? Okay. So please make sure you've got that. And then I'd like you to answer this. Do you like eating salad? And I should write, what kind of salad? What kind of salad? Okay. Caesar salad? Garden salad? Potato salad? Macaroni salad? What kind? So please make sure you answer this too. 
Okay, so for today, again, hopefully you took some notes because you never know. You might need this, so you're going, okay, I'm going to be pausing the video really quick, Miss Faust. Okay, making sure I got those notes. Oh, wait, I don't have it. I'm going to have to rewind, so to speak. Okay, all right. You never, never know. Tests could pop up. Who knows? So here's your assignment. When is it due, you ask? Yes, today. So when you're done reading this, answer these questions along with that, and then send it off to me. And yes, indeed, today. And I do hope you have a fantastic notice. Fantasy. Fantastic. I hope you have a fantastic day. Till next time. Bye-bye.